President Valela, welcome to CCTV and CGTN. Thank you for this opportunity. I want to begin by asking you, how did the idea of establishing diplomatic relations with China first come to you, and why do you decide to do it now? In 2010, I went to Shanghai for the World uh, Special Olympic Games, and I was very impressed with the city. Then I went to Beijing. I saw how China was opening its economy, and I saw all this development. So in a meeting in Beijing with leaders of the government, I, I talk about it. And when I came back to Panama, I made it public that if I become the president of Panama, I will establish a relationship with China. And I delivered my promise. That was my promise. And mainly uh, in a, a period of time, there was like a diplomatic truce. And I, was, I made clear to the Taiwanese that if the diplomatic truce was broken, I will uh, uh, recognize and establish a relationship with China and recognize the one China policy, and that's what I did. Uh, who, which Taiwan official did you talk to back then? Every level. Can you reveal to us about the conversations you've had with them about the diplomatic truce? You know that between 2008 and 2016, during the presidency of President Ma in Taiwan, uh, there was a diplomatic truce between China and Taiwan, and we respected the truce. And, but we made clear to all the Taiwanese officials at the highest level that if the diplomatic truce was over, then we will uh, recognize, establish diplomatic relations with China, and that's what we did. Uh, but on the other side of Taiwan Strait, and the leader of Taiwan, Tsai Ing-wen, upon your announcement of the switch, issued a statement expressing anger and um, regret, saying that Taiwan will not compete with Beijing for, quote unquote, checkbook diplomacy. Was that a fair and accurate characterization of what happened behind the scenes? I didn't ask anything to China. I just did the correct thing to do for my country, for our people, and for the, for the future of a strong relationship with China and Panama. But there were talks here, especially in the Western press, saying that uh, there might be you know, special deals or s economic assistance uh, taking Not place. Not at all. Not at all. Did you communicate with U.S. President Donald Trump um, before you made the announcement? What was his position? No, we just uh, called the U.S. ambassador to Panama like a couple of, uh, one hour before the announcement. And this is our decision, the decision of the Panamanian government, the president of Panama, and I think, and I'm pretty sure that, that I did the right thing for our people. You met with President Trump, and uh, did you talk to him about that? What was his position? Yes, we shared uh, how we did it, why we did it, and it was a formal conversation, but they understand that it's, it's our decision. And uh, was President Trump supportive of your own decision? Yes, it was our decision. I mean, the U.S. Uh, trade with China, 22 percent of the imports of the United States come from China, you know, and many of the goods come from through the Panama Canal. Even the, the gas, the LNG, big uh, tankers, they go from the United States to China through the Panama Canal, to, to the expanded Panama Canal. So it made all the sense to, to make the de decision. In your national television on the day of the announcement, you said you were convinced that the diplomatic switch is the correct path for Panama. Why is that? China is the largest population, has the largest population in the world, is the second largest economy, is the second main user of the Panama Canal, and the most important provider of the Cologne Free Zone, because in, from Cologne is a city in Panama, we are like the commercial arm of many Chinese goods to Latin America. So it met, and also the Chinese community in Panama is a strong community with a lot of tradition and, and in, in 1800, uh, the Chinese, uh, many, like 700 Chinese came to Panama to help build the Panama Railroad in a ship, the name was Sea Witch, and it's a recognition to the, what the Chinese community have done in Panama too. You mentioned uh, China's business community. How do you, Mr. President, expect the uh, diplomatic relationship to further advance China, Panama, economic and trade ties? To allow uh, many Chinese uh, companies to establish their headquarters in Panama, and from Panama, there are many Chinese companies have, have their headquarters in Panama, and from Panama be able to, to see their operations in the region, in Central America, Latin America, and the Caribbean. Panama is a hub. We connect from Panama City direct to 80 cities in America. Uh, from the canal, you can connect to 175 ports in different countries. So Panama is a hub, and the idea is that that hub and our logistic system can be used to, to, to strengthen the presence of Chinese companies in the region. Mm. You were, you mentioned the uh, Cologne port. Uh, actually, uh, I saw the photos where you were at the Cologne port, uh, where a Chinese company was involved in the project. And also the Chinese companies, I think, are bidding for 
the metro third lines in Panama. Yes, they are participating in different government projects, housing projects, a convention center in Panama City, and also they're going to develop a port uh, on the Atlantic side of Panama. Actually, last time I checked, 5% of Panama's population are ethnic Chinese. How would you describe their role in the Panamanian society and in shaping of the Panamanian culture? Very important role. They are all over the country in, in the provinces uh, of Panama, and they play a key, a, a very important role in trade, commerce, uh, restaurants, uh, and also they keep the, their culture, so that's part of the offer that we have for visitors that come to Panama, that is a very international country where you can uh, see all kind of uh, people from different countries, descendants uh, from China, from Europe, from uh, other, other countries. You know, when I announced on social media that uh, we would have this great opportunity to interview you, um, <laughs> most Chinese folks wanted me to ask you this question. When can Chinese citizens travel to Panama visa-free? And what is there to do in Panama and what is there to eat? <laughs> uh, that's the first agreement I want to sign, an agreement of tourism with the government of China to establish the regulations to allow Chinese citizens to be able to visit Panama as tourists. So that's the first agreement. I, I'm sending a team uh, from the Panamanian Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, uh, next week, and they're going to be negotiating with the Chinese government uh, this agreement, uh, the tourism exchange agreement, to be able to to bring uh, tourists from China uh, to Panama. Uh, there are many things to see in Panama. The, the, the Panama Canal, the, the Panama is the closest path between the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean, the mountains, the rainforest, the beach, the food, a lot of seafood, and Chinese like uh, seafood, and Panama is fresh seafood. Was it good Eat. seafood? Yeah, for sure, cleaner. Better than yeah. the Chinese seafood? <laughs> the Chinese prepare it very good too, but, uh, but the seafood is very fresh in Panama cleaner, uh, the mountains, the, the weather is very nice weather, and also a lot of culture, traditions from our people. So it's, it's going to be uh, a very uh, new destination for Chinese tourists, I'm, for, I'm sure of that. And, uh, also, they're gonna, they can uh, transit, the, uh, use the railroad that was built by the Chinese close to 170 years ago. In, in my questions to the Chinese uh, internet folks, uh, you know, when I ask them, what do you think of Panama? Uh, when you hear the name, uh, many people say Panama Canal, people speaking the Spanish language, and the American television series Prison Break, where Michael Schofield fled to Panama. That's the things that came to mind when they you know, talk about Panama. What is modern day Panama like? It's a very uh, beautiful city, nice skyline, and you can cross from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean in just 40 minutes in, in, in highway railroads. It has uh, like 600 kilometers of, of beach on the Atlantic and Pacific side. So also a, a, a very dense rainforest in the border with Colombia and a beautiful landscape and mountains in the border with Costa Rica. So uh, I'm, I'm sure that visitors will be very happy. They can see the canal and they can see also the story, uh, the history of Panama, of our tradition, how Panama connects the world, how Panama has been used for more than 500 years as a transit point for trade, for a flow of people going from one continent to another. So it's a very vibrant city that they're going to enjoy. You said you're going to send diplomatic missions to Beijing soon. Any dates um, on the opening of embassies? Yeah, we hope to open in 30 days. In 30 days from now? Yes. Anything you want to tell the Chinese audience directly? It's a relationship based in trust and the common good of our people. And I'm looking forward to go to China soon to be able to visit uh, Beijing, Shanghai, Wanzhou, and also to be able to present my country to, to the Chinese people and also to invite uh, Chinese companies, Chinese tourists to visit Panama and to build a strong relationship between our countries and our people. What will be the key word coming to mind when you think about China-Panama relationship at this point? Long time friendship. Long time friendship. It's been there for many years, just a matter of now with diplomatic relations. Thank you very much, President Varela. Thank you for this Thanks for your time. Great, thank you so much.